Dan Jibalisco here with a little discussion of a device commonly known as an optical coupler, also known as an opto isolator. Actually, the term optical coupler is somewhat more descriptive, but the term opto isolator seems to be somewhat more common. But in either case, optical, the word optical, is a little bit of a misleading term because that implies visible light. But in fact, these types of devices can also work with infrared radiation, which uh, lies just uh, below the visible light spectrum frequency-wise or at slightly longer wavelengths than visible red light. Here's a little schematic diagram showing the actual symbol for an opto-isolator, and it, it shows the anatomy pretty well. You put the input signal to a light-emitting diode, LED, or infrared-emitting diode, IRED, and it radiates through this clear interior, this transparent interior substance, such as plastic to a photodiode, a photodiode which varies its current, the current through it varies depending upon the instantaneous intensity of the light or infrared energy striking it. So you get an output signal that looks very much like the input signal. Now you might wonder, what is the point in doing this? Why would we want to convert, say, a radio frequency or audio frequency signal here? We might have AF or RF. Well, now there's an example of why this program sometimes drives me nuts. It's smarter than I am. So when I type RF, meaning radio frequency, it changes it over to therefore. Now how in the world it ever does that? Oh well, live and learn. You can laugh at these little bloopers. You can laugh at me. I don't care. Audio or radio frequency energy. How's that? That's what we put in. And that's what we get out. So you might logically wonder then, how come we change it over to visible light or infrared? Now there's a very interesting thing that happens. When you have any two devices, say an amplifier over here and an oscillator over here, you want to make a radio transmitter out of that. Or maybe you have a microphone preamplifier over here and a power amplifier or a set of more powerful amplifiers over here. In any case, whenever you have coupling between any two stages, be it capacitive coupling, transformer coupling, or any other form, electronic type of coupling, you always get a little bit of impedance bounce back or reflection. The output, the behavior of the output affects the input device so that if there's a significant change in this output impedance, for example, the input impedance to the amplifier, if that should change drastically, changing the output impedance at the coupling unit, whatever that is, then the input impedance will likewise be affected and that could make an oscillator stop working. And that uh, coupling problem, that, that uh, tendency of coupling to introduce impedance interactions is a problem that engineers have wrestled with ever since the very beginning of, of electronic devices and radio. But there's a way around that. When you convert this input signal to a visible light signal and then pick it up again over here 
you are really isolating the input and the output. You are changing this medium to something entirely different. Uh, instead of electrical currents flowing through here, you actually have radiant energy flowing through here. So even if you were to take this device here and short the output out directly, just short a wire right across it and make the impedance zero, you wouldn't affect anything here at all. The input device, say your oscillator, wouldn't see any change whatsoever in the operating conditions. It's just spewing its energy out into the medium in this optoisolator, and once that energy has been spewed out, this input device has nothing more to do with it. So there is none of this impedance interaction, and that is why optical couplers or optoisolators have become popular. You'll probably encounter them if you get into electronics, engineering, or any discipline similar to that. Communications. All of this and more can be found in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. Go to my website sciencewriter.net up to the top look at the Amazon uh, availability list there teach yourself electricity and electronics get the latest edition there are supplemental study materials on the internet too uh, relating to the fifth edition of this book and several of my other books go to my website click on the link called quiz explanations And you'll find those explanations, including some videos that explain the answers to the final exam questions. So all of the chapter-ending quiz uh, questions, the answers to all of those are explained in several of my books. And also their uh, answers to the final exams are explained in videos. And in addition to that, dare I say, there's a link here on my website called Mistakes. Every book has a few mistakes in it. Mine are no exception. I have published errata for my books on that site. Embarrassing though some of them may be, it's better that you know about them and get things right than not know about them and end up blowing up the galaxy. Stan Gibalisco. Signing off for now from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time, so long.